Right. Andrew Tate is the greatest professional wrestling villain of all time. He's the million dollar man, Ted DB. I saw some video where he's in there smoking a cigar. He goes, listen, some people, I never make mistakes. I've never made a mistake. Every decision I make is right. And he is, I can see that he's, you know, being a character. The problem is people don't all understand that he's doing a character. So when he goes, listen, I don't give, I, uh, I would give CPR, but not to a fat guy. I would only do CPR. <laughs> <laughs> on a hot chick, and that's it. That's on a hot chick, because I'm top G. Because I'm a top G. <laughs> a, a hot chick. Only a hot chick. And it's fucking hilarious. It's fucking hilarious if you watch it and understand that you're watching a character. The problem is people don't know that it's the a character. Is, that's how the Proud real. Boys That's how the Proud Boys start. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, uh, we talk about how we get ready to make some changes with the show and make the show a call-in show so that you, we can talk to the people who need to be talked to the most. We talk about the right righteousness of the teachings. I kind of blast all these ma- manosphere dudes who who ain't doing the right thing by the people and why it's important to share information. Um, we talk about Andrew Tate and uh, what makes great sex. Uh, yeah, it's a goodie, man. It's a goodie. We get into a lot of stuff. And then uh, we also talk about what some of the things we're going to do over at Patreon. And we're going to add uh, some of the archived episodes over at Patreon directly. Uh, but also we do bonus content. We do listener mail. Today we answer some more questions on Patreon in particular about how to uh, not be a rebound guy. So if you enjoy this content, you like the game, head over, head over to patreon.com slash manschool202. And also, if you want a relationship consultation, you can go to DanteNero.com uh, and click on consult if you want to talk to Dante. If you want some advice from me, you can email me directly uh, at advicefromharry at gmail.com. So that's all the info. I hope you enjoy the show, guys. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimper Gay? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Don do for the sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is uh, this episode is going to be um, just the family, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, just me and Harry going to kick it because we're getting ready to change format. But first and foremost, Harry, what's going on with you? How you feeling, bro? Oh, I'm feeling great, man. Having a good good time, living life, and then but still. Man, I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down. What's difficult, that about? Difficult. It's difficult. It is difficult. Pimping ain't easy, but if you practice, it gets easier. Um, the uh, interesting thing is, um, I want to tell all the fans that the show is 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 in transition. Um, what I mean by transition is that um, what we're gonna start doing is we want to do live calls and talk to the talk to the people. Because I realized that all my goofy celebrity friends are not nearly as <laughs> as interesting as I thought they were. And, uh, you know, I've been accused of not uh, dealing with technique as much as I would have normally, you know, um, which is why people listen to the show in the first place. And I, I also have been watching the the, the geography of what we would consider the manosphere, right? The whole, uh, you know, all of these guys who the Tates, the Jordan Petersons, the Fresh and Fitz, the Auburn Preach, the, you know, all these dudes who are in this manosphere, Alpha Male, um, Kevin Samuels, and um, and and it it, it uh, I mean. It, yeah, it, I mean, to a certain extent, it, it bothers me that, you know, people are capitalizing on something that Patrice and I did uh, in 2006. And this whole Manosphere thing comes out of the whole Black Phillips show. Um, well, it's just not just that they're capitalizing on it, but also almost in a way either bastardizing it or not preaching ethically and morally and righteously and giving out a lot of false information out there. And I, and I get it because you don't know what you don't know. Um, the only person that I would think that really is, uh, uh, who who I think is really honest, just just super honest and aware, is Corey Holcomb. Which I also watch Corey Holcomb evolve 
into into uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that he's created his, his own his own platform in a way that makes him uh that makes him truthful uh, and what he's talking about is definitely some ghetto shit but he's not wrong and I think those things bleed into they bleed into you know stuff that's you know there's always this tendency for this to, to, to these urban individuals but I, you know i know drug dealers that know the metric system better than white folks so mm. it is what it is you know um but he's one of the dudes that i think is really has has is has been authentic in a sense and that has matured in a way through money and time and and just experience where he's he's on track but a lot of dudes who even are saying good stuff i mean you, you, i think the the problem is, uh, I'm going to go back to over and over again, and I don't care if you heard it a thousand times, ace, 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 ace. Authenticity, credibility, and empathy. Your People are not taking it. They're, they're either emphasizing on one aspect of of, of the of the man school principles, uh, beige filler principles, black filler principles. They're emphasizing one as if, and usually that comes from their own weakness and their own... Uh, um, Insecurities. And their own, um, yeah, yeah, their own insecurities. Um, well, a lot of it, a also, lot of what people, uh, a lot of what people draw too from the Black Phillip show is the anger, right? It's the anger and frustration yeah. with women. And while some of that is it can be valid, it seems like it's only that that it's only about anger and that it's about the responsibility only fall the responsibility only falls on women and it doesn't it falls on you being the best version of yourself as well which is not a thing that they're out there teaching they teach it in the sense of being a high value man but what they talk about when they talk about high value is the financials of it are you making right. enough to drive a fancy car that's what they they view as high value on both sides of it it's and i think also you get you've created this this hyper uh like a hyper materialistic society that says that these things are the most important. And when I say over and over again, look, dog, you're not making more. I don't care who you are. You're not making more money than Johnny Depp. And he had a chick shitting in his bed. So like, if you can't be captain Jack Sparrow and get the respect from women, it has to be something other than the material things. It doesn't matter. It, it fact, doesn't matter it who to, you it are. It has nothing to do with the material thing. It's not about the material things that gets you the respect. Just And that's the problem is people focus on that aspect of it. You don't have to be a millionaire to get somebody's respect or to have a good relationship because most people are not millionaires. And there's, there's – how about this? Um, What's the chick? Markle? P Princess Markle? And I'm, I don't have a problem with the fact that – Prince Harry and and uh, who's his? What's his wife? Name? Meghan Markle. Uh, Meghan Markle. That he left his whack ass, colonizing, genocidal, fucking murderous family that reaped the that reaped the benefits off of the blood of of ethnic children. I don't have a problem, but the fact that he made this decision as a result of this black woman coming in his life shows you that how in the mar monarchy does the prince follow his his chick i guess the princess you would call her like when is that the thing when women look for this kind of strength this kind of openness this kind of manhood from the man that she and she's guiding the understanding and I, and i'm not don't get me wrong I do understand that women can have they have a perspective different and whatever. But my job is to keep the family safe, keep the roof over the head to provide. You know, we go we talk about this all the time. And well, what about women when they have their, they have an, uh, uh, you know, an untraditional environment or untraditional rate where the woman is the bread? Well, listen, the point is, let's stop talking about. The exceptions to the rule. That is not going like that. When you go out on a date, the guy is paying. And if he's not paying and they're going Dutch, then half the time you, you see this all the time. Women are going, this ain't no date if I got to pay for it. So there's something in place. There's a, there's a, there are these gender roles in place. And don't get me wrong. 
let me clarify this. I understand that the abuse of weak men and what they've done to women across the board is is horrendous. Um, but this is what happens when absolute absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we ended up in this Me Too situation because of men. The problem is the feminist movement has put uh, disrespectful, irresponsible women in place with, who literally disrespect women because they want to be because they want to be housewives. Somehow that's not good enough. That you have to have it all. You have to have the house, the car, the this, the career, and the children, and the nanny. You, 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 you cannot. You cannot do it all. And if you do it all, you're not going to do it well. Your kids are going to suffer. Your family's going to suffer. Your relationship is going to suffer. You're going to say something. I didn't mean to. No, yeah. I mean I, what I was going to say is uh, there's an aspect. We were talking about the finances of it. When the woman is the breadwinner, that doesn't matter. You still have to lead in a different fashion. Sure. It, it sure. may have nothing to do. You may not be the breadwinner, but you still have to come up with something to provide her that she needs in her life. And that is whether it's emotional support, whether it's um, whether it's a family situation that you have to take care of, whether it's physically protecting her. There's other aspects of what make you a man other than the finances of it. And that's what you bring to the table in a in a. a a standard uh, male female relationship, you know, something that's not the exception to the rule. And because and, and here's you here's you have to understand something. Women test men all the time. They test their they test their position to see and and I don't think I don't know if it's conscious or subconscious, but they test you to see if you really the motherfucker that you say you are. I think it's both. I think it's both. What do you subconscious. Mean? Oh. I think there's time yeah, where it's well, it conscious, and, and I enough. think that it, it's time where it's fully subconscious, and they don't know. But it's a test but that trust that me, it's happening constantly. And you better pass those tests. And when you don't pass it, so even if you're making, if the woman is making more money and she starts talking to you crazy because nigga, you not gonna, then you got to be like, well, oh, you take your rich funky ass and go, go the fuck on, cause I'm out. Yeah, so I, I, I think that more often than not, we, the show needs to, if, if, so here's the thing, regardless of that everything doesn't go my way, I'm, I'm happy with what I am and where I'm at. But I feel like in order for me to maintain my happiness, I need to stand up and push back on this nonsense that people are teaching people, teaching guys. And capitalizing on this, and, and and not even for the money. It's just like, what are you doing, man? I mean, this is this is destroying society. Like, I well, there's I, a know, couple I don't things, know if I've though. ever said this. Oh, go go for it. Sorry. Uh, you know, I have a me and Harry talk about this. So, just I have a ninety-five five percent people, meaning ninety-five percent of the motherfuckers in the world don't want to smoke, right? Mm. They don't want it. They will not confront situations that are that are uh, adversarial. Then there's five percent of people who are willing, always willing to step up and confront the 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 situation. Not afraid of con uh, confrontation. There's three percent of that five that uh, will confront and manipulate and control and manipulate people for their benefit. And there's two percent of people who are willing to take the smoke, but willing, also willing to fight for the righteousness of other people. I like to think that I'm that two percent. And so if I if I make this declaration about who I am as a person, then it is my obligation to do not just for all the guys who are getting fucked over and getting fucked around, but also it's my obligation because if I declare myself to be this person, I got to be this person. So I, why, why does it matter to you? Like, why morally does it matter to you to share? Because I go through that a little bit, too, like especially with stand up and there's younger kids. And, you know, I go, well, you could do this better. And they're like very appreciative. Like, thank you for that info. And I'm like, in my head, I go, I don't know. What else was I going to do with it? You know, like. 
I could just keep it to myself, but what I would have liked somebody have to have told me that. But for you, why does it matter? Like, well, I, I think that? I think uh, so. There's something I I've, I haven't said this in a long time. I don't even know if I've ever said it in the show. When you know things, there is a burden of 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 to teach. As you absorb information and you become more aware, right? It is a weight on you to know this information and to know that people people could benefit from it and you keep it to yourself. It's really it what's interesting, it's really difficult to do. It's difficult to to, you know, just to uh end up back in your bunker, right? And know that something is going on. Know that the world is going to end. Know that this and you know, and you know it's just. I think it's just society and and social norms say, you know, you got to go. Yo, is it, a monster coming? Yo, watch out! I mean, it, it's almost. I think it has to do with the empathy that you have, which is now. Now that I think of it, it it has to do with the empathy that the fact that you want people to be okay. And also, and it doesn't take away anything from you for other people to be happy. By the way, it doesn't no. take away from them from them at all. So, but people, the people who are insecure, think that all the time. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they don't want to help somebody I, because they feel like that person will come and take their spot, whatever that means, emotionally or literally. That's how people operate. I don't want this person taking my spot. Yeah, I. It's it's a weird thing because. Uh, you know, I was kind of turned around a little bit this weekend, too. So they announced the uh, Patrice O'Neill benefit again. Oh, when are you doing it? <laughs> Wh which uh, what are you going up? Are you like opening it? Are you closing and it? There's are people you... on there who never knew Patrice would never like them if they did meet him. Just have no idea. He wouldn't Just like them ridiculous. as well. Yeah. And uh, and it's like. I real literally like, and I've said this before. I said if they ever asked me to do it, I would tell them to fuck off. I I, I would I would I'm hoping they ask me so that I can tell them to fuck off. Like, I'm not doing this shit. I'm not interested. Um, because this is a it's a fucking sham, and uh and I I would love to tell the the chick who runs it and puts it together, uh, because what's funny is the chick who did it who, who produces it was actually uh, somebody that I walked through. I walked through a breakup that she was going through. She called me every day and never, but never called me for the benefit or nothing. And then even I've had even people go, how do you not let Dante do it when he, as close as he was and they don't want to hear. But it's neither here nor there. I, I think you live righteous because you have no choice but to live righteous. I just think it's that is the I cannot see somebody getting bullied or pushed around and not open my mouth. It's just my, you know, my hair stands on the back of my neck and I and I get to the point where I don't care about my particular my particular career or my my health or whatever. I'm just I'm just not going to do it. Did people you know? give you the information in, in, I mean, or just in general, any information in life? No, none. No, you figured it out on your own. Not at all. Yeah. I mean, you know, I would ask. I mean, well, let me say this: when I say no, people didn't give me the information. I, if I, I but I, I would go to people. I could recognize when somebody had some knowledge that I didn't have, and and what's interesting is people will ask. If they uh, people will tell ask. you if you ask them. Yeah. Yeah. If you ask them and you show genuine interest in what they do and genuine respect and interest, they will. I mean, the first studio I built, I was um, I was doing a voiceover um, audition and I was like, what? I was asking the guy who's, you know, reading the, uh, the voiceover audition. I was like, you know, when you when you set up the sound booth and blah, blah, and they were like, well, the guy goes, well, I don't really know. But the guy who we're building a new sound booth. Right. Um, This was at uh, what is it called? Oh, Buckwall. Buckwall, Buckwall, Buckwall and Associates. One of the biggest agents in New York City. He was like, well, the guy who builds the studios, the sound studios, 
And I, I said, can I talk to you for a minute? And this guy's working and screwing and, you know, soundproofing. And he goes, sure. And I go, man, I'm really interested in understanding. And this dude sat like paused from work and talked to me for an hour and a half. Everything that he could fit into an hour and a half about how to build a sound studio, which realistically was was the start of this podcast, really. I mean, that was the beginning of the podcast. It's, it was somebody saying, hey, listen, I have this information and I, I, I just I love this stuff. And I um I, I, and, and the fact that you respect it and you respect me and you respect this as an art form, I want to uh I definitely wanna want to um I wanna put you in a perspective where you 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 have an understanding of this. And I just thought that was fucking amazing. That you was know? amazing, yeah. Um so so I wanna just, just say something that you know we talk a, a lot about, rec especially recently, where you're talking about all these other people, you know, doing the, the manosphere, or whatever that is, red yeah. pilling and all that. And so I want it to be clear what you're doing is not bitching and complaining and you're not you're not just being like, oh, an old old timer going, oh, I don't like how these young kids are doing it. The information they're giving out there is erroneous and it's and it's not accurate. It is not going to help people. Yeah. It's, it's going to cause more damage in the long run because people are not skilled to act it, act that way, which they're not being righteous to begin with. So they're they're acting people to act in a way that they do not act like in real life. When you find out that they're they're paying for sex and they're paying for uh, hookups and they're using their clout and their fame to achieve that and they're acting like they're the man. Somebody's going to watch that and then think that's the way to maintain a relationship or to to uh, have more women, to to have more sex, to have more relationships. And it's wrong and it's going to hurt a lot of people. Well, you know, what's interesting is is one of the things that you, I hear this a lot, because uh, now uh, with the whole Andrew Tate thing, um, there's British radio and stuff and british people are talking about him because of the fact that he got arrested and he's a brit and whatever whatever and uh and people who were supporters of his says listen um he has given guidance to young dudes who were not in the gym who were not reading books who were not exploring life and being men in the, in the, in the, in the sense of accountability he's made um and so but how much is this cheapened by the fact that these dudes had was so reckless with the message and leaned into the anger to the to, to the extent that now all that they have done is being negated because all that he's done is being negated because of this this thing so the, the the thing with Andrew Tate in particular is Andrew Tate is doing a character. Right. He's doing professional wrestling. Right. Andrew Tate is the greatest professional wrestling villain of all time. He's the million dollar man, Ted DB. I saw some video where he's in there smoking a cigar. He goes, listen, some people, I never make mistakes. I've never made a mistake. Every decision I make is right. And he is, I can see that he's, you know, being a character. The problem is right. people don't all understand that he's doing a character. So when he goes, listen, I don't give, I uh, I would give CPR, but not to a fat guy. I would only do CPR on a hot <laughs> chick, and that's it. That's on a hot chick, because I'm top G. Because I'm a top G. <laughs> a, a hot chick. Only a hot chick. And it's fucking hilarious. It's fucking hilarious if you watch it and understand that you're watching a character. The problem is people don't know that it's a character. Is, that's they how the Proud real. Boys, that's how the Proud Boys start. Oh, yeah, that's right. Same that thing. is true. And and I really learned my lesson about the responsibility of my words because your words can be changed and, and twisted and moved into a way where it uh you know it really uh it, it really doesn't um it doesn't work. I mean it doesn't it's just not good. It's just not a good thing. Um because people grab onto that and they grab it and, and it negates it's like, look, man. Uh, in 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 quiet times, I still sing. I I could believe I could fly. That doesn't mean I advocate R. Kelly being a pedophile, you know. But it doesn't negate that there was some good music, you know. Yeah. 
Um, doesn't it, the, you can separate the message and the work artistically. But again, the problem is when you go out there with your real name, yeah. you're not. People think you're you're speaking the truth. You're not doing a character. He's making a shitload of money doing this character, but they don't realize it's a character. But the uh, my biggest problem with all of it is the type of information where it's it, it goes right back to the pickup artist thing. And the thing that was that was rough about the pickup artist thing was these pickup artists were teaching all these tricks and techniques to trick women essentially into uh, going out with them and having sex with them to show that they were they were tricking them into thinking that they were like a really cool uh, person, but they never did any work no, on themselves. And I mean, I, I saw a couple of documentaries on that where these guys really have basically pressured women to the point where he they sexually assaulted these women like these women to find themselves in a you know drugged in, a, in, a, in an apartment somewhere or in, in a hotel room and, and don't know what the fuck happened from the pickup artist i'm not familiar yeah, yeah, with that yeah, okay. yeah, that... fair enough but but the bigger point is they never improved on themselves right and so that uh, th the thing that we try to teach is that the key to really lasting relationships starts with making yourself better, not tricking people, not not uh, creating an illusion, but actually making yourself so good and so so strong as an individual, as a man, that you become irresistible for who you actually are, not right. tricking people into thinking you're somebody else. And the problem with this new generation of the, the red pill dudes, it's all about creating this illusion of, uh, to hell with women, they're no good, you're strong, you're the one who's in control. But that doesn't, you haven't done anything to do any self-improvement on yourself. Like the Andrew Tate thing, it's great that guys get to the gym, I think that's great. I think reading books is great if that's all that it was. Right. But on top of that, it's philosophies like, you know, that uh, you're immediately superior as a man right off the start. No, you're not superior as a man. You're superior as an individual based on what you have accomplished, whether you're a man or a woman. So the notion that the, that, that they teach right off the bat is women women are idiots. They don't know what they're doing. You're As a guy, you're automatic. No, you haven't done anything to earn that yet as a guy. Right. You have to improve who you are. You have to build on something and become something before you can make demands. So what we teach is when you talk about you know maintaining a relationship and not negotiating your non-negotiables, the, the second part about that is that in order to do that, you have to be on the top of your game. You have to be doing everything right from your end individually aside from your partner. And that's right. the other thing because you can't expect and make requests of your partner to do outrageous things or, or not outrageous things. You can't make requests of your partner to do things that are uh, not what everyone else is doing or, you know, when you're not yourself well, and, and your what best. you're asking a lot of times go against what the narrative is this that's the what boss I mean, yeah. bitch don't i don't do this huh? if you take me i what do you bring to the table i am the table it's just like you 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 we're, we're talking about and I, and i get it i get where the anger comes from because it's there's a they're speaking in tr contradiction i don't look <laughs> Never, never was a dude who advocated dudes violence to women, but it, it takes comes to reason. If you say I want to be equal, you have to understand. Well, then now you got to buck up, get a rifle and you got to go to war. You got you got to fight and die in the trenches. You can't you have, have to, equality just when it's convenient for you and just when it right, benefits you. Because yeah. it's not equal. It, that's not what equal is. First of all. Uh, you know, we're different. People are different. So if you have to take that in, into consideration, if you have to lower the standards of 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 the fire department to to get women into it, uh, like I, yo, I don't, I'm I'm 300 pounds. I don't want to be caught in a fire. And some little 110 pound chick comes up and says, "Hey, there's nobody up there," because she don't want to drag my big ass out. You know, it it's. We we but we we're at a point where we can't have the conversation, and I understand. I understand the frustration between young guys because it went from reckless abandonment on, and and uh, you know, women on the menu to you better not say nothing. And when you when you whenever you see people people that have a certain privilege, 
And then all of a sudden things start to balance out in some level of equality. It always feel like it feels like you're disenfranchised. And the oh, the difference is the pickup artist could, you know, get you drunk. Like back in the days, you get drink, drink wine coolers and get them high and you talk them and then you and you get laid. That was the, the norm. And women, because things were so un unfair, women didn't have any recourse to that. But now when a woman says if a woman has consensually hooks up with a dude and decides that he didn't call the Uber or he didn't pay for her to go home, she can say he molested me or he assaulted me. And now that's a thing. That, that is a whole thing. Even if he gets proven not to, this is a thing, whether he did it or not. And, and, and the thing where we literally were at the place where it was like, we need to believe all women, dog. <laughs> Amilda Marcos, this bitch was stealing. This bitch was stealing shoes. She had thousands of pairs of shoes, and, pe and the country was starving because of it. I mean, people talk about Hillary Clinton, like yo, they they were robbing motherfuckers. They had all kinds of shit going on. You, um, what's the bitch? Uh, the bitch with the Jewish space lasers. Um, Jewish Green, space uh, lasers and uh, the gazpacho. Uh, uh this bitch it. in Congress, like. You you cannot say that Marjorie all Taylor are, Green. All women are righteous and all women are come on dog. It's like we, we, but to have to say that is not can't even have a conversation. But I, I think what's happening is the pendulum is swinging back. And and the problem is I'm 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 seeing people that I counseled falling victim to this shit. And becoming people that they're ultimately in time going to realize that they made mistakes. It's and it's not good. We got some listener mail though. Let's get into mm, this. Um, let's do it because we haven't been doing this nearly enough. And I want to say so, to the Patreon, check the check out the Patreon Man School Two Hundred Two slash. I'm sorry, patreoncom slash school 202 Please sign up for the Patreon. It's a way that we keep this content going and. We're trying to move forward and reach more people and, and, and just fix the mess that we're in. Yeah, and one of the uh, bonus things we do on the Patreon uh, every week is we either do a bonus show and a lot of times we do listener mail over at the Patreon. So that's where you get all the technique and the bonus content. And uh, starting very, very soon, we are going to finally upload all the old episodes from uh, Man School 202. Back when we started out as the Beige Phillip Show, all those episodes will... Find their way onto Which, Patreon. Keep in mind they're just audio because nobody was doing video then. We were not. Nobody age. was doing video. <laughs> was but, it pre Facebook? No, 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 no. Facebook was around for sure. Facebook's been around since two thousand two, but they they the the video capability was not great to do podcasts right, back right. then. So very right, few right. people did it, and we just just thought of it as a different thing. But anyway, uh, the episodes will be up, you know, and you can enjoy. Some of them are better quality than others. But they're, they're fun. There's a lot of lessons in all of that stuff. So a lot of people have been asking. And so. I, I think it's important to see the transition that even we made. You know. Jeez, I haven't listened to those episodes. I don't. I can't imagine what I sound like on those episodes. I don't even want to know. I don't even know what, Some I, know of the what I was saying back then. I was spewing yeah. on those episodes. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, another reason why we're talking about these other Hey, do me a favor. If you're going to listen to those episodes and you find something that can get me canceled, let me know. Let me see what's going on. I don't even remember what we were saying back then. I mean, we, I think we should be good, right? But, you know, yeah. 2012, that was a different time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So here's the listener mail. Uh, as I've been talking to this chick for about six weeks, uh, mostly on FaceTime. We kept it cordial. Uh, one day she hits me up out of nowhere. She wants to hang out. Uh, we grab some food in a movie and then we have sex. We've, uh, we've got some mutual friends, wanted to keep it between us, but recently she has been acting weird. At least I, I, I at least, uh, she would speak to me, but now it's like, she's just completely cut me off. I don't want to say it was bothering me because it is, but I'm looking for a direction to handle this relationship. If this is what she wants, I I, I do then, oh, oh, then I do want me to do then okay. But I hate it when people do this, then turn around and talk to me 
when when it benefits them, asking me to help with things or whatever. Any advice? Okay, so you want to summarize this a little bit more because I'm a little confused. She was with a guy at the job. This is boom, from a boom, woman. Boom, boom. They kind of was casual. She hit sorry, sorry. Up. This this letter's from a woman. It's from a guy. Uh, from a guy. Okay, so yeah. what happens here? So he he uh he was kind of at a job. They were kind of friendly. Whatever. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, she hits him up. Let's hang out. They go to the movie. They fuck. Right. Then afterwards, she kind of starts creating a distance. It was like, well, we don't want nobody to know. Um, and uh, then she starts icing him out. Um, and then she barely talks to him at all, except when she needs something at the job. Okay. I'm going to let you feel this, Harry, and then I'm going I'm I'm to fill in the... I'm going to say that the sex might have been trash, if I'm going to take a guess, or that something... Or that he got a couple things. The only theory, and not, and I don't know this person at all, so I have no idea what it could be. But my instinct is either sexually mm -hmm. didn't work, or he got too needy and too close too quick, and she's just not into it anymore. And all, also at this point, if she's not into it, then just move on. There's nothing to gain from it. If she okay, ain't into is there it, you any move reason on. why you would think the sex was trash? I just the timing of it. If it happened right after the sex, that something didn't work out sexually that she didn't like. Okay. That would be the only reason. If if the timing of that email is accurate and they, they stopped, she stopped chatting and iced him out after. Well, they, 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 they hooked up. Now, what if the, the sex was okay? See, so. It could be. I don't know if the sex was. I'm not saying for sure. I'm just taking okay. a, a couple things that I could. I'm trying to do my flow chart and see a couple different ways that it could have gone wrong. One, he could it just be too needy and too eager or something or too into it. Or she met somebody else that she's more into. Or she wanted to have a fling. And that's she it. She had the fling and I'm done. Yeah, that could um, be it too. And it might not even be that the sex is bad. Um, I mean, the sex, I mean, understand this, you know, and I've said this a bunch of times. Sex doesn't, is not great ever initially. I don't care who you are. I don't care who, who who these people are, whatever. There is always apprehension and 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 fear and anxiety and both of you want to hook up and you you want it to be good. You you know, it, it, we're put into a situation where we're vulnerable. So even if the sex is good, it's never great or never potentially what it could be. Great sex happens when two people intimately connect and they both want to please each other with a balance of a level of selfishness that allows the guy to allow her to please him and a level of selfishness that allows this woman to want to allow him to please her. So that both things have to be, all, all parties have to be in place, number one, the sex has got to be great enough that because we mutually want to please each other, but we have to be able to sink into ourselves and allow somebody please to please us on both sides. Otherwise, that is the definition of great sex. Think about that in terms of the subtleties and the nuance of that. How often does that happen? And how, how often does it ever happen in any situation, considering the trauma and things that people have gone through and they're not able to be open and honest in the first place? So there's that. So um, unless the sex was trash where he couldn't get an erection, which I think if he had the problem or if he thought the tra sex was trash was... You know, it You'd was uh, he probably, probably would have said yeah, that. Yeah. Fair uh, enough. You know, um, but there's also situations where guys will be in. They haven't had a lot of sexual experience and, and you know, and they don't know, are unaware of what good, great sex looks like or what that's always the case. But what I think to figure out why or how is the problem doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, do it doesn't matter. You had a good, enjoyable experience. Take it for what it's worth. Think about all the other guys at the office who didn't get to to bang her. No. Yeah. You know, enjoy that fling, whatever little fling. Not all. By the way, not all relationships, not all hookups are meant to be forever. You 
you you enjoy it just like all friendships you ever you ever go like on vacation and you meet a guy or something and yeah. you hang out you're like this fucking guy is pretty cool like let's and then you leave and then you never talk again you know what's interesting whatever. about that say you go to a foreign country you meet up with somebody and you get really cool right yeah. you're like wow this is a great friendship it may or may not be a great friendship a lot of times it has to do with the fact that you're in a foreign country and nobody else has the, the life ex the same experience as you. So you're connecting on a fundamental level because you have no other options. You know, people who are starving, you know, probably don't have a gluten free allergy. You know, you 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 get a gluten free allergy is a third world problem where people who have an have enough food to eat get to or they get to get a they have so much food and so much abundance that they get to not uh not, not to, to, they get to have allergies about food and and gluten free you know i would probably even um I, I would i would wonder i would love to see the studies on this somebody who has a pe peanut allergy who all of a sudden is in the desert and they're say five days from starving to death i would like to see if they if they would still have the peanut allergy if they still would have it or could eat it yeah, Fuck, man, I don't see that's interesting because I don't know. It might be poison. It might still poison them. But you are but you are right that where they don't have peanut allergies is, you know, Somalia, you know, yeah. or it, Ethiopia, where you eat because your body needs sustenance. But they also don't have a shitload of hand sanitizer, which is where I believe the peanut allergy thing comes I, from. But I mean, I don't know the body to not. I don't know the body to not adapt when it needs to adapt. It either adapts or dies. But th let's not go there. But the the point being, we're in a situation where now, um, you like the first thing you said is that this is an experience that you got to have. So what is he frustrated about? He wants more. What he got's not good enough. It was good enough that he would want more. Now he wants more, and he's mad because he doesn't want more. Something that I've been thinking about a lot is, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of consultations. Every time I do a consultation, uh, you know, there'll always be some guy go, yeah, she cheated on me. And I go, we need to stop saying she cheated on me. There's no, nobody cheated on you. Somebody did what they wanted to do and they were dishonest. Meaning they told you it was going to be one thing. It wasn't one thing. It's something else. And they did what they wanted to do. They're not doing it to you. People, you, people's dishonesty, although it, I, I think emotionally it affects people, but these are people who are telling you who they are. You should embrace them, not embrace them in your life because they're dishonest, but you should applaud them for showing you, you their dishonesty before you're in a marriage 10 years deep. Yeah, you know, it's not so much applaud, but like, yeah, be grateful that you found it now. You found out now what type of person they really are. Time is the commodity. Yeah. So as you get older, time falls, time, time writes itself off. And you don't, so you see this over and over and over again when you see people, um, you know, in these relationships, red flags from the first day that they meet the person. And then they stick it out because they're so insecure that they don't want to be alone, that they keep putting into this and putting over, putting up with things that are, go against their non-negotiables. And then all of a sudden you're in a situation where you're 20 years in a relationship and finally the, you feel, he's been cheating on me my whole life. Well, well, you thought that was okay. That's why you put up with it. You communicated that this behavior is acceptable. So what how can does you this expect? How does this apply to this guy situation? I'm sorry, we got so a little this off guy, course here. I mean, you have to take, if somebody doesn't want you, they're telling you, clearly if she's not responding to you, she doesn't want you. If if you if somebody wants you, they make sure that they pursue you. And if they don't want you, they stop pursuing you. The, I understand that that's a difficult thing to accept as a man to accept the defeat, but is it the problem is that you're looking at it as as defeat? If you got a if a woman meets a guy and he's got a six pack and he's got a Bugatti and he's Bugatti. he's a he's a uh, a top J instead of a top G, he's even higher than a top G. What about if he has herpes? 
What about if he has AIDS? What about if he's a he's That's a, a sociopath? top HIV right there? I mean, and I'm not saying that that's what the case, but I'm saying we're assessing this person's value on the looks, on the possessions, on the clout, on the money, on the control, which I get you can do. And that. also they're also the least useful criteria as far as a, a, a good relationship. That's what used to drive me nuts about the, the Kevin Samuels thing was that he would call up and go, listen, if you want a high value man, this, that, 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 they want a high value man. Um, you're not you're not good enough to be with the high value man that you're you're looking to get. But he never explained to them. But you can find love because love is not based on somebody's finances right. or their credit score. The type of human being that can be a loving human being and a loving partner is not based on how much their annual salary is or if they have six figures in the bank that has nothing to do with love. Yeah. Yeah. I I um dude, I I would imagine that uh Leopold the 3rd, the Dutch genocide king in the Congo. I I I would I would imagine he, if there was a Bugatti, he would have one. You know what I mean? <laughs> If they made him back then, he'd be driving around in his Bugatti. He'd be driving in a Bugatti with as Andrew Tate and would say, just murdering people in his Bugatti. Hitler, Hitler would have had a Bugatti if they Ooh. made one. It's it's and and what I try to show dudes over and over again is that when you put this out, right? You um when you when you ask people. Can you? How many of your friends? I've said this over and over. Every consultation I do, I ask this: How many people do you know that are honest, tell the truth, authenticity, credibility? That they say what they mean, mean what they say, and they're honest about that, and they put that forward first, and still have the empathy that when something goes off or you go nuts or whatever, something that affects you emotionally, have the ability to see it from your perspective. And everyone stops and there's silence on the phone when I'm doing my consultations. A total silence. And they're running through their roller decks. Well, so it's real world. And then as you could see them thinking, this is a person I thought of. And then, oh, yeah, I forgot this incident. I forgot that incident. And then they go, well, very, they either say very few people or they say um, very few or uh, I can't think of anybody, right? Um, and so, it, you know, everything relates to everything else. The value of something is based on the availability of it. Meaning um, in the diamond trade, they have trenches full of diamonds, but they release certain diamonds at a certain time. This is how they control the price, supply and demand. It's mathematical. If you have, if, if trustworthiness and, and honesty and, and confidence and these things were, um, if, they, if they were so easy to get, we would be, we would literally be able to say, oh, I got, you know, when I asked that question, they'd be rattling off, oh, there's James and John and this guy and Harry and Sullivan and Steve and this and that, you know what I'm saying? But every time I ask that question, it's scarce. And the reason why it's scarce is because, man, it's a rarity for somebody to be righteous. If we think about through, through, through history and through time, right, every time you when you talk about guys like Bruce Lee or guys like Muhammad Ali or guys like Malcolm X or guys like uh President Kennedy or guys who did extraordinary things they they are far and few between you know they're far and few between and that's because what they do is so so extraordinary you know and if we don't understand that that's that's the case then we start to we, we start to say that things are important that are not important, or at least we feel like the things that we're 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 advocating are not as important as the things that are. And it's the rarity of having somebody because yeah, I get it. The six pack, the cum gutters, the Bugatti, the you know, the millions of followers on Instagram, the concerts, the planes. Yeah, but somebody you could have all of that shit and the, and somebody treats you like trash. 
women can have a dude in a you're in a mansion with diamonds and Manolo, Manolo Blancs and red bottoms and Louis Vuitton and stuff, and then a guy who leaves you in that in that house for you to kill yourself, like you're just echoing and and you know what I'm saying? It's understand what the value is, and I'm learning this more and more because it's funny because me and Harry we talk about this all the time. The friends that we have that are celebrities are miserable. All of them. If, all of them. All I, of them. I don't know. And if I throw we an have almost. I, I throw not. an almost out there just in case I run into them, and I and they, they go, "Hey, man, why'd you say that?" I'm like, oh, I said almost, not you. I'm not talking about you, bro. No, miserable. they're all miserable. All of them are miserable because it has nothing to do with money, nothing to do with success. And that's the beauty of it, though. People look at that as like, oh, how sad. No, isn't that freeing to know that you don't have to be a millionaire to find the happiness yeah. and peace? Yeah. You can start working on that right now. Yeah. You don't got to wait till your first million or until you drive a, a Bugatti, as yeah. uh, Andrew Tate would say. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to be a top J. You can start now on finding the happiness that that dude probably does not have as he sits, I believe, currently still in a Bucharest uh, detention facility. I don't and, know if he's out yet or and, not. And, and Jordan Peterson, this dude is crying about dudes dudes not getting laid and has nothing for them to do. And, and he's lying to them. And just it's just ridiculous. I mean, you know, that clown is a is a weasel, um, just a fucking weasel. And it just and I get how people get caught up in that. Because he says things that make sense, and then as soon as you start following, he makes a right turn that makes you, makes you, gives you, gives you a whiplash. So let's let's close this out, and then we're gonna go do something on the Patreon. Um, Gybb, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. I appreciate y'all. Please follow us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Please follow us on Instagram, all the social medias. Don't forget we do consultations. Mine's is DanteNero.com. Click on consult, Harry. What are you, your if you want to reach me for consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you on that. And then everything else, follow my social media, at Harry Turjani, and follow me on TikTok. I'm doing some fun stuff over there. And follow my YouTube channel. Peace. We out of here.